Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Today's webinar will be about new to Clip Studio Paint, learn how to use it. Presented by Sarjin Chang, also known as the one with bear. Before we begin the webinar, there are some housekeeping items that we'd like to go through. The webinar will be approximately one hour long. All attendees will be muted. Question and answer session will be during the last 15 minutes of the webinar. Attendees can ask questions in the GoToWebinar question box right away. Due to time constraints, not all questions will be answered. The webinar will be recorded. The recording will be shared on social media and will be sent via email to all registrants and attendees. The panelists for this webinar are Mario Quinones, myself, Joanna Brower, and Sarah Jean Chang. For those of you who connect with us for the very first time or have never heard about Clip Studio Paint, Clip Studio Paint is your all-in-one solution for stunning, ready to publish illustrations, comics, manga, and animations. Learn more at clipstudio.net forward slash n and graphicsly.com. And with that, we'd like to pass the reins of the webinar to Sarah Jean and her presentation, New to Clip Studio Paint, Learn How to Use It. Thank you so much. All right, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mario. Okay. All right. Everything, okay. <laughs> Are you having trouble finding <laughs> the cursor? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, okay, let me do this. All right, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Perfect, thank you so much. Hello everybody, welcome. And thank you so much for taking your time out of the day to join me. Uh, we are going to be talking about Clip Studio Paint or the introduction today. Don't worry, I did not prep any April Fool's joke. Uh, I can guarantee I'm a, I'm a true professional, right? So I don't joke, <laughs> I'm very serious. And so yeah, you can uh, be guaranteed that today all of the information will be genuine. <laughs> and But I am a digital and traditional artist. I do all kinds of different mediums. I do a lot of painting, a lot of line art in Clip Studio and Quite frankly, this has been such a crazy learning experience with the software because I come from traditional background and I've used a lot of different software in the past. And all of the software that I've used in the past, they were always, there's one thing that they do really well, but not the other. And when I finally came across Clip Studio, I was really just blown away. Um, because it does everything that I need it to do and does everything really, really well. Um, so today I really want to talk about this particular topic because I remember when I first bought Clip Studio Paint, it was in 2016. I bought it for, uh, I bought it for 50% off. <laughs> and then I opened the interface I got really overwhelmed. I had no idea what, it, what was going on. And because I was very familiar with another software already, I had years of experience in that. So um, due to just feeling like, uh, I don't, what can this software do for me? I don't really know. And therefore, I even though I bought it, it was sitting in my hard drive for half, a, uh, like a, pretty much a whole year. Um, before I finally decided to fully give it a go. So uh, one of the main reasons I really want to present this topic was because I remember that feeling of just opening the software and have no idea what's going on and feeling intimidated and decided to, you know, uh, I'll just leave it to tomorrow. Um, but once I really, really learned it, I wish I had learned it earlier. So if you feel that way, then today I really want to kind of share um, share my, my findings in the beginning and what has helped me 
get over that hurdle, that initial hurdle. And um, before we start, I would just like to let you know that today there is quite a bit of information. And since we only have one hour, and I'll do my absolute best to keep it under time. Um, but if we don't have time for a QA and a um, or, you know, if you have a lot of questions throughout the uh, throughout the presentation that you felt, oh, what does she do there? Um, please remember to write it down and you can message me on social media afterward and I'll be really happy to help you out. This is just in case that we don't really get to the Q&A today or, you know, the things feel too overwhelming and I'm not explaining the details too well. Um, another thing to talk about before we start Today, we are not going to get into individual tools because honestly, I can spend like easily two hours talking about each tool, <laughs> but we only have one hour. So <laughs> um, so today, the main focal point is to talk about the interface and kind of get yourself familiar with the environment in Clip Studio Paint, kind of like making yourself comfortable in the software and knowing where things are and also how to make it how to customize it so in a way that you don't feel overwhelmed when you open the software and then making you not want to work in it so that is going to be the primary um, point today but at the end of the webinar i have a ton of resources to share with you if you want to learn individual tools i have made um, a very in-depth tutorial on pretty much all of the tools that I personally find very useful. So that is all. <laughs> oh, end of the session. <laughs> just, just kidding. Okay, so let's, without further ado, let's get started. The very first, uh, today we're going to cover hopefully seven topics. Customize the workspace, toolbar, shortcuts, command bar and quick access, brushes, layers, and materials. And we're going to start with customize workspace. When you first get into Clip Studio, this is probably what you're going to see. You have all of these, you know, stuff going around here. So we're gonna go over each session here. <clears throat> On the top, you have the menu bar. Let's just go ahead and ignore all of that. <laughs> and then over here, you have the command bar, which we will talk about later in number four. So this is the command bar. And then on the left, you have the toolbar, which we will talk about next. And then you have all of these big panels and clutter that's around it, um, as well as the middle, which is your working area. <clears throat> Now the working area is where you will be, you know, zooming in and out and moving your canvas around. This is where you draw. I think that's probably fairly obvious. <laughs> but um, but normally when you first come in here, this is this space is empty because you haven't started a new file. So let's go over to what exactly is going on on all of these, you know, sections next to it. Now. The first panel you will see on the left is called subtools. Now, subtools are basically the secondary tools within the toolbar. So, if you click on the toolbar, you will see that the subtools are changing in here. So, each under each tool, you will see several settings or different tools within that toolbar. For example, the most obvious would be brushes. Uh, you would have all of your brush folders under your tool. So these are each brush is called a particular subtool. Now, the second panel is also very important. This uh, this panel is called the tool property panel. The tool property panel is basically controlling the behavior of each subtool. So you can see like, for example, brushes, you have all of these attributes that you can adjust to change these brushes. Or in the Zoom, you have all of these different behavior. We will go in and talk about, talk a little bit about this um, particular, 
particular panel a little bit later. But these two things are very, very important. So just remember them. Now, the third one is fairly straightforward. The third one is the brush size. So if you click on different, like in the middle of the screen, you can see uh, the brush size is changing. So even though they all look like a bunch of dots, but what they're doing is controlling the size of your brush. <clears throat> now the bottom one, oh, that's huge. <laughs> Let's pick a reasonably okay looking brush. Okay, now on the bottom, you have the color palette. The outer ring controls the hue, the middle ring controls the saturation and the brightness. Now you can also change the middle part from square to triangle if you're fancy like that. <clears throat> you can go ahead and ignore these numbers for now as well. And then there are three different color modes. There is um, the main color, the drawing color. The drawing color is this one right here. The second one, which is the sub color, this is also very important because you can toggle between the two colors at any time. And you can also change the subcolor to something else. And then we have the paint transparency, which we will talk about a little bit later when we get to brushes. And next to this particular tab, you see some of the grayed out tab. You just click on them and then that will bring the palette out. out. There is other ways of controlling the colors as well if you want to. And here we have the preset color set. You can have various different uh, sort of default color sets that come with Clip Studio Paint. So you can, um, for example, this is bright tone. There's dark grayish tone. So you can select the color that are in here. You can also come up with your own color set if you so wish. <clears throat> If you are constantly going um, after a few, like for example, if you do, if you do comics, if you do uh, webtoons, and your characters have particular sets of color, you can always use this palette as well. And here we have a very interesting color palette where you can, um, you know, put in different colors and then they will give you like an in-between or gradient-ish color that you can select. And then this one is, you, you know, I, I, I try, I'm going to try and pretend that I understand, but I just really don't. So <laughs> I'm going to ignore this one for now. <laughs> and then this is the color history. Um, so all of the colors that you have selected prior, it's going to show up in the color history. Now, for a regular person, the color wheel and also the color palette or color history will probably be more in, more than enough. And if you're irregular, if you know what, I don't actually know what an irregular person is, so I don't actually know how to finish that sentence. Let's let's just move on. <laughs> okay, so that's the color stuff. And over here, uh, on the top here, you have the navigator. The navigator is incredibly useful. Let me actually pull this out so that you can see what it does. The navigator is basically a window to your canvas. And then you can use this to at any time move around your canvas. So for example, if you have your um, canvas zoomed in really, really closely, and then all of a sudden you want to work on the right cor right hand corner side, you can just move this over here. So that is a very easy navigating system for you. And you can also click on this little button right here. Hold on, let me, so you can actually click on this little button right here and it will fit it to the screen as well. Um, you can flip at any time, or if you're brave enough, you can paint upside down if you want to. So there is the navigator. And in order to move these um, panels around, all you have to do is drag it. And you will see if I want to put it back in where it was before, I can just, you see that red line on the top over there? Once you release it, it's going to dock it back to that particular area. 
And then the next part, we have the sub view uh, palette. The sub view palette is very, very interesting. Uh, this can actually be very handy when you're working on a big project with a lot of reference. Sub view is basically a reference folder and it will load the references no matter um, if you close the Clip Studio Paint and then re you restart, the references are still going to be in there. So for example, if I wanted two references on there, you can just um, click on this little area to import the different references and then it'll load it into the sub view panel. And then if you click left and right, it will just move it back and forth that you can see. And you can just use this as a reference as you're painting on your canvas. Now, one of the, the best thing about it also, let me actually start another, um, uh, another layer right there. We will talk about the layer palette later on as well. So when I drop like this, you will see if I move over to the uh, sub view palette, it's going to change into a little hand where I can move it like this. Now, if I toggle this little eyedropper icon on the bottom right, this eyedropper icon, if I toggle that, it's actually going to automatically change into an eyedropper when I move into the sub view um, palette. So this is really convenient when you have some preset color because you don't have to press any key. You just move it into that scene and then it's going to automatically pick up the color. So that is what the sub uh, sub view palette do. <laughs> I don't know. I, I I got kind of you know stuck on my sentence there. The third one is the item bank. Now item bank is another very interesting one. If you click on this little icon right on the bottom left, it says register. You can register a ton of different items. For example, right now I want to use this gold foil. I can open it and it'll load the item into this bank. For example, if I want this piece to constantly have the same texture but in different portion of the um, of the painting, I can just load this texture into the item bank. I can drag it in here, and then that will give me that that will give me the uh, the texture file and i can drag it again and it will give it give me another texture file so this is really convenient when you're working with a very large amount of textures or sound files for example if you need to do animation uh, you can actually use this palette to um, basically organize all of the stuff instead of having to open it uh, from outside of Clip Studio Paint again and again. And it's going to save this information to the canvas as well. So let me actually control Z that. And the last one is the information panel, which gives you the location of uh, your cursor. But uh, quite frankly, the numbers are kind of the bane of my existence. So I just ignore it. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't really do anything for me. It might be helpful to you, not really helpful to me. Um, and then the next part of it, we have the layer property, which we will talk a little bit about um, later on as well. But layer property basically gives you different effect on the layer without actually changing the layer itself. So you can just uh, toggle it to turn on. For example, this one is the border effect. And then this one is the extract line, which is a very interesting uh, feature. If you have a painting, this can actually give you pretty clean line work uh, just from toggling it. And then also the tone as well. <clears throat> Let me actually uh, do this. So this one is the tone. Um, this is incredibly helpful when you are working on a manga or comics or stuff like that. And then the last one is a layer color. So you can see it changing the behavior. You can also change um, the color of the layer if you so wish, like that. Okay, so this is the layer property. The next part is the search layer. Now you can use the search layer to, you know, 
search your layers, <laughs> especially when you have a ton of different ones. Like today for the presentation, I actually went through the trouble of naming all of my layers. Now, I know that most of you guys don't name your layers. So, you know, that's when search layer becomes really handy. The, uh, the final one in this palette is the animation cell. This is used for animation. So you can actually go ahead and ignore that if you're not using animation. Um, and then on the bottom, you have the layer palette, which is extremely important, but we're not going to talk about this one right now because we are going to be covering it uh, later on in number six. Here is the history. So history um, basically loads all of your action. And if you see, if I press Control Z and I keep on pressing Control Z, it will just keep on going up. Okay, and if I press Control Y, it's going to go down again. Oh, basically forwarding and backtracking or backtracking. Control Z, Control Y. Okay, and the auto action we're also not going to talk about, but base, basically auto action is uh, it can record um, a sequence of your action and then replay it at other scenario. For example, if you want to resize it and then you know that you're going to be resizing a lot of different files, then you can re record the steps to resize and then play it on all of the other files. So that is auto action. On the bottom here, if you hit expand, you'll see there's timeline and all side view. So all side view is for uh, your 3D models and timeline is for your animation. Now, if you click on this little uh, arrow icon, if you click on just one tiny arrow, it's going to collapse the, the menu, but still keep the icon. If you hit this bottom one that has a double arrow, it's going to collapse the whole thing. Uh, until you click on that again, it's going to expand that. So that is um, these ones. So now that I have kind of explained uh, all of the palettes around, I'll explain how to customize and move them around. So like I said, you can actually just drag a tab outside if you want a window to float. And I accidentally click on that. So there you go. And you can also drag it to in between palettes. So it's going to create that, it's going to fit that into the top and bottom one, or you can drag it to the side of a palette so that it's going to create that space over there. Or if you just go in and then it's going to show the whole palette as red, it's going to dock it next to it. So this is how you kind of just drag everything around. Now this particular bar right here, we're not going to talk about right now. Uh, you will see a lot of different icons here, but we will get to that later. So just ignore these one for now. Also, I forgot to say earlier, uh, if you have Clip Studio Paint already, I do encourage you to open your Clip Studio Paint right now and then kind of poke around uh, on these things with me in real time because I generally find that to be the easiest way to kind of remember everything and where things are. Uh, so if you um, also, if if that helps you to learn that way, I do encourage um, that you do this with me as well. So now that you can start customizing your workflow, like I want, I don't know, maybe um, I want all of these things to be, you know, we want, you know how like they say geniuses, they always, you know, work in a very chaotic space. So, you know, that's, that's what I'm trying to be. And, and yeah, this makes me very happy. So once um, I feel like, okay, this is great. Like this workspace looks amazing. You go into window, workspace, register workspace. Okay, so right here, we'll type in the name of your workspace and I would just type in, I don't know, happy gen genius. <laughs> and then you save. So every time afterward, um, you can actually just load that up. For example, if I want to load 
uh, we can reset to default. If you don't like what you just did, you can reset your workspace to default and everything will go back to how it was before. And then if you want your a particular workspace, you can just reload the one that you just saved. Okay? Just like that. Except that, you know, this is not actually how I work, so I'm going to um, change it to something else. <laughs> I'm not happy nor a genius. <laughs> All right, so that is um, that is basically how workspace do uh, how workspace can be done. And what I also recommend you to do. Oh, there you go. What did I do there? Okay, there fixed it. <clears throat> what I also recommend you to do is close everything. I know that's pretty sacrilegious, you know, to the developer, but literally just close everything except for uh, subtool, tool property, color wheel, and layer. You only really need these four. The rest of it you don't particularly need for now. Now, all of these palettes, while they're really, really useful, but um, they mostly kind of just aid your work to be a little bit more comfortable. So if you don't want to overwhelm yourself, feel free to just go ahead and click on the little three bar on the top left and then say, hide navigator palette, for example. And just go ahead and hide all of those if they really overwhelm you and you don't know why they're there. So if I go ahead and hide all of those and just declutter, all of my workspace to a point where I feel this is more inviting and more comfortable for me to use, then by all means do that. Don't be scared. Um, you know, the you can always reset to default if you so wish, right? Okay. So <laughs> I'm like really scared that we're running out of time. <laughs> okay, so the second part we're gonna move to is the toolbar. Now I'm actually going to change uh let me let me see right here all right so what i just did was i moved um i saved a workspace where i moved the toolbar to the right and then the sub tool is here the tool property is here and the layer is also here color wheel and that's all that i have the reason why i moved everything here is for you to um see this a little bit easier uh, when I'm about what I'm about to show you. So under each tool, you have zoom. This is zooming in and out. You will see once you click, once you use the zoom tool, you click on it, you drag to the right, it's going to zoom in. Drag to the left, it's going to zoom out. The hand tool can navigate the whole canvas. You can move it around like that, or you can rotate it. When you are using the rotate tool, double click, it's going to snap it back to the original space. Oh, did I accidentally actually hit the entire thing? <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I don't know. What happened to my canvas? <laughs> Hold on, let me restart this canvas because I think I accidentally, there you go. I accidentally messed it up. Okay. So the hand tool and the rotation control your viewing canvas. Now the uh, operation includes object tool, select layer, uh, light table, and edit timeline. Light table and edit timeline are for animation. Select layer allows you to automatically toggle to a particular layer. So if I click on this brushes, see it jumps to brushes layer. And if I click on layers, it jumped to this one. So select layer is a tool that you use to automatically select wherever you are clicking on. And the object tool we'll talk a little bit about later. Now there is also the move layer. So we can use this one to move the layer, just the layer as well. And what I was telling you about, about the uh, tool property palette, where it controls the behavior of each tool. For example, um, with the move tool, it gives you these three attributes that you can use. Move the object 
at the click location. Now, right now, without that clicked, you can see that wherever I click it, where, wherever that I am clicking, it is moving the customized workspace layer. However, if I select this and I, I hover over brushes, you will see that it's moving the brush layer instead or uh, toolbar. But it still selects the customized layer um, because we did not toggle this particular attribute, which says change the status of the object, move to of the object. It's pretty wordy, but you know, just click on it. <laughs> and then once this time with that checked, if you want to move this one, you will see that it automatically jumps to select that particular layer instead of staying at customize. So same thing with the other layers as well. So just by you know easily toggling these um, these tool property menu and the attributes in it, you can easily change the behavior of each sub tool. Now here we have the selection. You can make selection like that, or you know use a lasso tool. When you hold down Alt, it will deselect certain parts. If you press Shift, you will add to the selection, and then Control D to deselect. Okay, so there are a lot of different ways uh, to make your selection, and then there is uh, Auto Select as well, where you can you can select the color, for example. And right now it's selecting all of the oranges because I don't have apply to connected pixel only. So if I select this, you'll only um, you'll only select that particular area because the pixels are all connected. And if you have that deselect, it's going to select all of this orange uh, that I can find on your layer. That is the uh, auto select tool. And then the eyedropper is fairly uh, straightforward. It will pick up the color that you are clicking on. And there are two different modes. There is obtain display color and pick up color from layer. So if I have display color, then you know right now when I'm clicking on all of these parts, it's going to change the color. But if I have pick up color from layer, you will see that a customize actually only has this area that has pixel. All of the rest of that this particular layer is empty. So if I click on this area right here, even though it shows as green, but on this layer it's empty. So it will automatically toggle to transparency because that area that I just clicked on on this layer is transparent. Until I click back into the orange, then it's going to change back to the orange. So that's the two different subtool setting under eyedropper. Now the top group, you will see like the toolbar is separated by these little divider right here, like these divider right here. So the top group are basically utilities. The middle group are painting tools. The bottom are all of the other stuff. <laughs> so once you go into uh, the middle group, you will see there's pen, marker, there are different groups uh, within each tool. There's pencil, there's pastel, there's watercolor uh, on their brushes, there's watercolor, realistic watercolor, thick paint, et cetera, et cetera. There is a massive amount of default brushes that you can easily just go in and try each of them out. There is the airbrush, which has a ton of different settings as well. There's decorations. Decorations is actually really, really fun, like that. Um, and there is the eraser tool and the blend tool. Now, I don't personally really use the blend tool because uh, the brush engine that we will talk a little bit about later um, actually does a really, really phenomenal job in terms of blending. So I rarely use this, but if um, if you need, those are over here. And on the bottom, under the all of the other stuff that aids you, we have the fill tool. This is the paint bucket. We have the gradient, 
all of the gradient presets as well as the line uh, the contour line paint this one is actually quite interesting um, I recently only learned about it from, from Clip Studio's own tips. Uh, I won't show it today, but if you want to type in contour line paint in, uh, in Clip Studio Paint and Google this feature, it's pretty fun actually. But basically they do uh, similar things there to provide a gradient for you. Now we have the direct line, which you can use to draw a line. Uh, you have the con continuous line curve for example, whoop, there you go. So, and then the lasso fill is also fun. You can, you know, just use it to make a selection. And without pressing on anything else, it's going to actually fill that area with your drawing color right away. So lasso fill is under the direct, uh, the figure, the figure tool. And there is, uh, you can actually use this to draw some uh horizontal lines and you can use this to draw some other different shapes so these are all really just kind of for you to explore don't be afraid to click on each of them and then if you feel like oh certain tools like how come this is not doing what i want it to do then you can always go into the clip studio paint tips page and then try to uh, search for that particular function now the frame border tool, uh, this one is actually just for comic books. So if you're not using comic books, chances are you're not going to be using um, this. We won't talk about this feature today. The ruler tool, uh, tons of different rulers. I actually have a tutorial covering this particular feature. Um, and text, pretty straightforward. Uh, we have, um, the balloon tool, which is also for comic books, you can oh, you can actually use um, a balloon pen to oh, wait. What wait, and what did I do? Okay, there. <laughs> it was drawing on black, so I couldn't see. Uh, but basically, these are um, speech bubble tool. Um, but because right now my background is black, so you couldn't really see where I was drawing. But if I change it to this. Uh, you can see. So this is also for comic books. It's incredibly useful. And the lastly, you have the correct line, uh, sorry, the correct line uh, tool with all of these subtools. These are for vector layer uh, for your line art. This is insanely, insanely useful. If you want to do fast line art in Clip Studio Paint, use the vector layer and learn this palette, learn everything in this palette. I also have tutorial on this, so we won't go into talking about it today because this is a huge topic. <laughs> and also remove dust is for you to clean up your scanned traditional art, for example. So those are the toolbar and all of the tools and what they do. Um, again, if you are confused about what each one does, honestly, just click on it, um, click on the canvas and see what happens. If nothing happens, then try and look up a tutorial that talks about that particular item because um, there is actually a ton of information that covers each of these tools. So we are not going to uh, go into individual ones to talk about since we're very short on time already. <laughs> There's just so much to talk about. Oh my God. All right. So, but um, if we're going to talk about tools, we have to talk about shortcuts. And I am going to show you where to change your shortcuts. When you go into File, go into Shortcut Settings, right here, it is absolutely worth it to spend some time to look through all of these. Because what happens is, um, I remember when I was using a software from before, I felt like I felt like every single key that I was pressing on did something, and I wasn't sure what it was doing. Now in Clip Studio Paint, the difference with that is when I press on the same keys, it may not necessarily do the same thing because the default shortcut settings may not be the same as other software. So if you have experience with other software, it is absolutely worth it 
to spend a few hours to go down um, to go down the menu and try to change everything to how you like to work. Um, and I can cover the setting areas a little bit. Tools are basically what you see in the toolbar. So under tool menu, you will see all of these um, all of these tools are basically what you see over here. And the keys will be controlling um, these tools and how to toggle them. One of the interesting thing is you will notice brush, airbrush, and also decoration start with B and they all start with B. And what that means is when you press on B, it's actually going to toggle between all three. Right? So this actually really threw me off in the beginning because I sometimes just click a key for no reason. <laughs> like I know I already have the brush selected, but I just keep on pressing B regardless. I don't know why. Um, but you know, it would just randomly I'll be like painting, painting. Oh, I'll be I would be like painting. And all of a sudden I just, you know, felt like pressing on B again, and then I would be drawing heart. And that's just really confusing to me. <laughs> so once I discover that's what I was trying to do, uh, I just went ahead, click on this, and then delete the shortcut. So um, you can use this as a way to kind of just understand the tools a lot more. And another really cool thing is that if you uh, click on the little drop down uh, arrow, you will notice that literally every single brush in the subtool palette is loaded in here, including your own brushes. Like I have a ton of brushes that I made to speed up my workflow. You can actually assign um, all of your own brushes to a hotkey as well. So it's not limited to just, you know, be to a generic brush that you last selected. Um, and also under the setting area, you can find main menu controls, basically this menu bar that we completely ignored. <laughs> so main menu is over here. Uh, everything you can find up here can be shortcutted uh, in this area. Pop-up palette is actually very interesting. I, I, I only learned about this very recently, and I've been using Clip Studio for for almost four years at this point, I think, uh, but I only discovered this really recently, and I'll show you what that means. Pop-up palette is a menu that suddenly comes up when you need it to, right next to your cursor. So for example, uh, we want the navigator. Let, let's say the navigator, okay. We'll edit shortcut, we'll press one, because that's what I want to assign it to, and then hit OK. And remember, like before, the navigator would be docked in the menu. But now that I assign a pop up palette to one, when I press one, it's going to show up right next to where my cursor is. And if I press one again, it's going to disappear. So I can actually use this as a way to quickly call it up and then close it, quickly call it up and close it. This is so powerful because this means a lot of the these palettes I can actually turn them all off. Uh, let me actually fit that to the screen. I can actually turn them all off and just use that particular uh, pop-up palette short key to call up the palette whenever I need it. So then you can have even less clutter at your workspace, um, and you know that will become more welcoming for you to use. Now, that is the short key for pop-up palette. And then we have option. So option is basically the behavior of the tools or everything else. For example, you have the brush size palette, which changes your um, brush sizes. So the behavior of the brush tool. And then you can also use a uh, drawing color. This is by default. Use X to switch between main color and sub color, or use C to switch between drawing color and transparency. So, for example, like you look at these color palette over here, 
if you press C, uh, if you press X, it's going to toggle between the two colors, right? And if you press C, it's going to toggle between the uh, transparency and the orange, like that. And then if you press the bracket, it's going to expand and um, smaller one just using the opposite side of the, the palette. So if you want to change all of that, uh, feel free to feel free to look around and also uh, experiment to see what you are comfortable with or use this to match uh, whatever keys that you need from another uh, from another program. And auto action is the auto action that you recorded before and then you can assign them to any key, but we won't really talk about that today. Okay, so that is the shortcut setting. And once you, you know, customize everything to your liking, remember to hit OK, don't hit the cross. Once you hit close, it's actually going to reset it to what it was before. So remember to hit OK. And then once you have customized all of your settings, go into Window, Workspace, and register your workspace again under the same name. And that will overwrite uh, the shortcut to the last set that you have saved. So that is the shortcut. And same thing with Command Bar and Quick Access. So these, uh, I'm actually going to change this to, um, now I'm going to load up. Uh, this is how I usually work. This is my personal workspace. I like everything kind of uh, docked to the side um, and just keeping it as clean as possible. I don't actually normally have this particular bar open as well, but because I want to talk about that later, I keep I am keeping it open. Now, command bar and quick access is this thing and then also this icon over here. These two are also part of your short key system. Uh, the command bar will always stay up here no matter what document you have open. So they are, so for example, there are new, uh, you can start a new canvas from that button. Um, you can open, you can open the document, uh, you can save. There is export in JPEG, uh, undo, redo, et cetera, et cetera. And they are all fully customizable. If you right click on it, command bar settings, you can actually add any of the feature just like before. Um, and they also always use the same menu system as well, like pop-up palette, um, options, basically all the features that you could find under a particular setting menu in the short key, you're going to find them in the same exact location over here and tools, if I like the smooth watercolor brush, for example, I can actually add this to my command bar. So this is really useful for people who don't have a very close uh, keyboard uh, nearby because you can use this uh, to quickly toggle that particular set tool. You don't have to use your keyboard. So spend some time uh, to kind of look into this, think about, your own behavior when it comes to drawing. What tools do you like the most? And these things all take time. Um, you don't have to start using them right away, but it's good to know that they're there to aid you in the future. Like I said, even though I've been using Clip Studio for four years, but I'm still constantly changing my workspace to fit my need because I'm constantly discovering more and more features that I can put uh, next to me that I want to that I want to use. Same thing with quick access. Quick access is a, a different uh, palette, but compared to the command bar, command bar is just one set on the top. Now quick access, you can actually have different set. You can click on this little sub menu over here, and then you can go in here and say, okay, I want to change the uh, viewing order. You can change the different viewing orders. You can put a lot of different shortcuts in here for you to click on whenever you want. And you can also create a new set, for example, and then just put all of the new hotkeys in here as well. Uh, you can go into quick access setting and just add all of the settings that you would need into this bar. 
Now, why this is really powerful is because you can actually go in here, shortcut setting again. You can go into a pop-up palette and look up quick access, which is the very first one. I have assigned it to number one because, <laughs> you know, it's very easy to remember. And now whenever I need to um, need my set of hotkeys, I just press number one and I cut, for example, I cut the entire layer um, or copy or duplicate layer. I can actually do all of that really, really quickly. Uh, just, okay, I want to change. <clears throat> Oops, actually, let me select this instead. Okay, so I click one and I just brightness and contrast. I can change that. Um, and then the pop-up palette is going to disappear to uh, kind of avoid being in my way constantly. So this is something that I really, really enjoy doing. You can pretty much assign any feature that you will want uh, to this particular palette and customize them to your liking. So. We finished only half of the stuff that I wanted to talk about. <laughs> and we're almost um, almost to three o'clock. Um, but I still really want to get into the rest of it. Um, please bear with me. Uh, actually, is it possible that we go a tiny bit over time today, Joanna and Mario? A tiny bit. <laughs> <laughs> tiny depends bit. On, okay. Depends on how much, like 10 minutes? Okay, yeah, I, I, I would, then, yeah, definitely. Let's, let's hurry up. <laughs> okay, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I, I already warned them prior to the session. I was like, this is a lot. <laughs> um, but thank you, thank you, Joanna. Okay, let's see how we go. <laughs> okay, so the next part is brushes. And brushes, like I said, they are all in the middle section. All of these are the brushes. Now, when you look at the brushes and the folders, you might find this to be overwhelming. And what you would notice in the tool property palette, let me actually drag this over here so you can see. A lot of people get really overwhelmed by this part because whenever you're pressing, you're changing um, a, a brush tool, you will notice that this entire palette keeps on changing. And that's really confusing and kind of overwhelming. But what happens is if you click on this little um, wrench tool over here on the bottom right, click on that, you will notice that actually all of these brushes use the same exact sub tool detail palette. Like they all use the same engine and it doesn't matter what type of brushes you're looking at, decoration brushes, uh, watercolor brushes, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, they all use this particular engine. So once you learn this engine, you basically can create any kind of brush that you want, um, and you just go into each individual mood. I also have a tutorial on this, um, on like going over what each of these feature do. Uh, but basically, the reason why you're seeing that there are so many things that are changing. This is actually controlled by the little eye icon next to each attribute. So if I click on this, that attribute is going to disappear from the tool property palette. If you click on it again, it's going to show up. Now, this doesn't mean that it has enabled that feature. What it does is merely that it shows up in this palette, right? So then you can, if you have a brush and then you don't really need, um, it's extra feature, like you know that you're not going to be changing that feature, you can um, absolutely just turn it off to kind of declutter um, and not have too many things that are really overwhelming over here. So that's basically what it does. And since we are really low on time, we don't really have uh, time to go into the color mixing. But again, I have covered this in my brush engine tutorial. So I will explain in depth of color mixing because I know this is one of the things that throws a lot of people off when they first get into Clip Studio, when they're using a brush and for some reason the colors are dragging and blending together in a really weird way. Um, but this is actually a very powerful brush engine called the color mixing. So 
um, I will actually give you a link to my tutorial site, uh, tutorial list later so you can check this out um, at your own free time. Okay, so that is the brushes. So just remember, even though the brushes may seem really, really overwhelming, they all use the same engine, um, no matter what it is. So as long as you under that understand that one engine, you basically have mastered the brushes in Clip Studio Paint. <clears throat> the next part is layers. Okay, let me pull this out. All right, and let me actually start a new file. So you can start a new file by Control N. Okay, and we have a very ugly color selective for paper layer. When you are uh, starting a new file, you can start an illustration file, a webtoon, comic, and the print and fan, uh, the fanzine is um, actually exclusive to Clip Studio Paint EX. But most of the stuff that I talked about today are all available in Pro as well. So these things we won't get into today. We're stick. We're gonna stick to illustration. And a lot of people always ask me. Oh, like what resolution do you put in? And my answer is always the same. Think about how big you want this print to print. So if you are thinking about like a letter size, you can, what's a letter size? Letter size is 8.5 times 11 when you have the unit selected to inch or anything like that. So if I want to print the size to be like this, and then just set the resolution to 300 always, okay? Don't no, There's no real need to change the resolution unless you're doing like a GIF, which is 72 is fine, but for simplicity's sake, just stick to 300. And the, uh, the canvas size, you can just think about how big you want to print in inches or in CM. <clears throat> And then the paper color uh, is basically the base color of your canvas. Now we have a very ugly color selected because I'm going to uh, teach you how to change that later. One of the best thing about uh, Clip Studio is that it has this little paper color um, right here selected. And template is for people who do comics. So we're going to bypass that for now. Moving illustration is animation. So again, we're going to bypass that for now. And then you can check record time lapse. This is really important. Um, if you want to record your drawing process, this is always leaving it checked. Okay. And then once you do that, just start a new illustration. So now you see the layer palette. It has a paper layer as well as a transparent raster layer on top. Now, the best thing about this is that the first time that you start drawing on this canvas, it's not going to mix it with the base color, which kind of throws me off. I know there is a way to get around it in other software, but you, they always require an extra depth step of setting up, whereas, um, in Clip Studio Paint, they just uh, separate the two for you. And then you can always change the paper color as well. Let me actually, by double clicking on that. And then if I want a white canvas, I just change it to a white canvas, <clears throat> just like that. So it's very, very simple. Now we're gonna go into the little icon here. Uh, let's see, okay. Yep, we have a little bit of time. <laughs> I'm bargaining for time right now. Okay, so here you have the raster layer. This icon right here is the raster layer. You can start as many raster layers as you want. Next to it, you have the vector layer. The vector layer is for line art and it's incredibly useful. And it will show up here by having a tiny little bit of icon. I won't talk about the vector layer today, um, but if you want to learn about vector, again, I have very extensive tutorial on that. Um, and then you can have layer group. So for example, if I have a ton of layers, you can actually start a new group and select the whole thing by selecting one layer, hitting shift, select the other, 
and then just drag the whole thing into the folder as well. There is also a feature where it just does that automatically in the um, actually in the uh, in the quick access that I have assigned, but I deleted that because <laughs> I, I don't know why. <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to just, you know, draw, I'm going to draw a little bear here. So I like the lasso fill a lot. And here, let me turn off my magnifier. So I'm going to quickly draw, What happened there? Okay, so again, pressing C to turn it into transparency. So now it's going to actually behave kind of like an eraser, but without toggling to the eraser tool. So I'm going to like draw a little bear today. Um, C again to paint transparency. C again to swap back. Okay, I'm going to draw a little bear. And if I want to paint a pattern on this bear, but without wanting it to go outside. So for example, <clears throat> here, let's use a pen tool. If I want to draw like, I don't know, some marks on the face, but I don't want it to go outside of what I already drew. What you do is you click on this little icon here. This is called lock transparency, this one right here. So once you click on that, you'll see that it is limited to whatever pixel that I have already put down, like that. Now, but at the same time, I kind of want to try different um, different patterns on the face. I don't want it to just you know touch the base layer. So what we're gonna do is on another layer. Okay. Let's delete. This is the delete icon that can remove a layer. What we're going to do is we're going to start another raster layer on top of it. And I can draw other icon like, I don't know, uh, like that. But I wanted to limit to the bottom layer. So once I have this layer selected, you can click on this particular icon that says clip to layer below, this first icon right here. So once you click on that, you'll see there is a red line over here that limits it to whatever pixel that is on the bottom layer. So this is really helpful because it allows you to um, basically clip it down without actually erasing. Um, what is inside this layer. No, those are really useful. Um, the reference the reference layer and then the draft layer we are not going to talk about today because these two are a little bit more complex um, because they interact with a lot of other tools for now. Um, but if you want to learn more, again, I do have uh, tutorials especially covering uh, what these features do. But if you're just starting to use Clip Studio Paint, you can go ahead and ignore those two for now. Now, the lock layer just means you won't be able to do anything else on this layer. So, you know, once you're done with this layer and you don't want to accidentally touch it, the lock layer is a got set, which I don't use and I always regret it. <laughs> so those are uh, the different layer icon. and you can also do, um, if you have a few layers that are really important, you can actually use this icon to change the color of that particular layer uh, just for your own indication. For example, if you want all of your line art to have this particular uh, indication, you can always change them over here on this one. And another thing is the layer mode. So once we have the top layer selected, you can change the mode, the blending mode over here. Now, I, I won't pretend that I know what exactly they do scientifically, but <laughs> I just kind of go by my guts. You can use your mouse, hover over this box over here and use your scrolling wheel to scroll down the different modes. So 
the blending mode will change how the top layer behaves with the bottom layer in terms of color. <clears throat> so you can just kind of like scroll through them and see if there is like a satisfying um, color combination that you will want. Uh, so that's usually what I do. I don't actually know what subtract actually does. <laughs> so I just kind of uh, do that. One last thing when it comes to layer. Oh, we're almost done. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, one last thing is the mask. So the mask layer is also very important. Once you start a mask layer, mask is basically covering up what is available on this layer, but without actually deleting it. So when you have the mask layer selected, if you use a eraser, for example, and then you erase it, you will notice that there is a black patch on the mask layer. Now this means that it doesn't necessarily get rid of the um, the what you actually drew, it just covered it. So if I press shift and I press this, I click on this mask layer, it's going to show it again, or disable that mask and then uh, reveal it again. And then basically eraser is to get rid of it pen tool or any color tool is to reveal it again. So if I want to do that, uh, I can do that at ease. Now, another thing is the middle check icon can control the connection between your layer and your mask. So for example, right now, the middle is checked, right? There's like a little check icon in between the layer and the mask. And I use a move tool to move this thing, it will move the layer and the mask. But if I remove this, uh, uncheck the middle section, I'm going to move the layer, but not the mask. Or if I select the mask, it's going to move the mask and not the layer. So that is the relationship between mask and the layer. And then you can kind of adjust their behavior at your ease. So those are the basic of layers. Okay, I'm going to dock this and almost we have a tiny bit of bargain time. Okay, so lastly, materials. Materials are these, I, these crazy icons that I told you to kind of ignore them earlier today, but also not really. Um, so all of these materials are really, really incredible assets that you can help to aid your um, to aid your work. For example, I have this particular piece uh, that I did for the last, oops, uh, that I did for the last um, Clip Studio Paint session. Oops, I used the, the space key. And a lot of these materials are, some of them are hand-drawn, some of them are using the existing materials in Clip Studio, and you can download more uh, or you can purchase more um, there are a ton of them for free in the Clip Studio Asset Store um, that you can you can actually access from File Open Clip Studio. So you can act, uh, you can get to the Clip Studio Asset Store from uh, Clip Studio menu over there. And all of these materials you can basically just drag and drop drag and drop them into here. And remember that object tool that I told you about earlier? So this object tool is exactly the thing that can control uh, the behavior. Where did my subtool palette go? When you have something that accidentally disappear, uh, you can find them under window. Okay, there you go. So. You can actually control that, uh, control these and their behavior using your object tool. Now, the there are a ton of different materials in the material folder, and you should spend a little bit of time. Like there are tone papers, there are patterns, mono monochromatic patterns. There are uh, these uh, these really awesome textures, and then you can tile them tile them differently, you can scale them. You can even 
change the layer color. So let's see, I want to change the layer color. The layer color uh, little palette is over here. You can change it to, for example, like this. And then you can change the layer blending mode to something else, for example, like screen, um, you change into glow, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the power of these pre-existing textures that come with Clip Studio. And the last thing is the 3D models. The 3D models, I have a very extensive tutorial on that because the 3D models has been a godsend for me and all of my work. I basically use it for all of my illustrations. So I highly recommend uh, you to, to check them out. Now, before I know we are done with time, um, but before I go today, uh, I have this particular list of things. Uh, the tutorial list that I was telling you about is under tinyurl.com slash CSP tutorials. I covered brush engine, how to use the vector layer, intro and advanced. Uh, close and fill is for you to do color flats really, really, really fast. Uh, 3D models is for you to kind of build your own environments or even use the, the human models uh, to pose, etc. All of the rulers, the comic book features and the animation features. And I think each of these, I spend about 25 to like 40 hours to make um, into like a, a condensed um, kind of detailed information on how you can use them. And other than that, um, there are a ton of really awesome resources like Clip Studio Paint Tips uh, by Datotronic, which I learned, I learned a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of stuff from him. He has just a very genius way of approaching the software. Uh, Tips.clipstudio.com has a ton of uh, written as well as video tutorials that Clip Studio Paint provided um, and also aided by the community. Uh, Ruben Lara is the first person that I learned Clip Studio Paint from uh, back in 2017. So uh, he does a fantastic introduction to uh, the whole software. And of course, Graphicsly, who does a ton of different webinars such as this one uh, to cover all kinds of different usage of Clip Studio Paint. So thank you guys so much. I'm so sorry for going over time. I know that was a lot. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but thank you for your patience, guys. <laughs> I think we made it. I think we made it. And I mean, it could probably go on for a while. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, okay, if I really want to talk about Clip Studio, I can go on for five hours, I swear, <laughs> but <laughs> I can't. Okay. So uh, we don't have a lot of time for questions, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, just mm -hmm. really quick. Uh, your setup, could you just say what you're using? Because that's always a question. Yes. Uh, yeah, so my PC, I have an Asus ROG Strix B550A. My CPU is a Ryzen 9 3900X. GPU is Evga GTX 1070. Now I'm hoping to upgrade that eventually. RAM, I have 32 gig RAM, and I'm on a Wacom Cintiq Pro 24. So that is okay. my setup. Mm -hmm. So you're on the draw on screen tablets. Yes. For, the, <laughs> for those who don't don't quite know. Um, and I think you also have like your own brush pack that you're offering somewhere. Yes. <laughs> oh, thank you. So, oh, there, let me toggle back. I actually do have my Sumi brush pack. Uh, this is a brush pack that I designed. Oh, let me actually quickly. So this is um, a brush pack that I designed to to imitate uh, in real life brushes because again I am a traditional background so I really like having that kind of um, authentic traditional look when it comes to brush designs so uh, these are available on Graphicsly and again like making these brushes you can watch my brush um, brush engine tutorial so you can understand the brush engine and how to make brushes yourself as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
I think I think we really have to have to end it here for I know I'm now. so sorry and <laughs> honestly guys if you have any question please please feel free to message me on Instagram because honestly I know <laughs> I know that people mu must have a lot and we went over a lot of things really fast as well so please don't hesitate to ask me your question in my DM uh, I'll be happy to help okay yeah. all right then let's 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 end it here for now and then maybe maybe there will be more in the future so okay i'm so sorry thank you guys so much um so much. i don't want to get them into trouble <laughs> <laughs> okay. all right i'll give the well, time back yeah. to mario yep thank you so much Arjun. and uh, thank you so much joanna and uh, thank you so much to everybody who joined us today uh, everybody loved your presentation. I'm really, we are really sorry that time went so fast. <laughs> um, but you guys uh, learn more about Clip Studio Paint on our websites, clipstudio.net forward slash n and graphicsly.com. And just a reminder that this webinar has been recorded so you can rewatch it and share it on YouTube. It will be uh, on YouTube channel of Clip Studio Paint channel and graphicsly. Subscribe to receive a notification once the video is online. And for more information, please follow Sarah Jean. She is awesome. You will learn a ton. Uh, follow her on her social media, Instagram, The One Minute Bear, Our Station, Twitch, and Twitter. So with that, thank you so much, Sarah Jean. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, that was fun. <laughs> it was really fun. Thank you so much, Joanna. And thank, thank you. you all for staying with us. And we hope to see you on our next webinar. Uh, and yeah, please stay uh, stay tuned on our social media. So see thank you soon. Thank you guys. Bye. 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 Bye.